one, two practical things. If a person has attention to something, they activate emotional intelligence. By having a deep att attention to something, they activate the heart being able to see the truth. Like we say for Chinuch, it's important that a person thinks half an hour about the, the education of children. What's that going to do? That's going to activate your ability to have um, that's going to activate your ability to to have proper emotional intelligence for the children. The thinking, the time. Oh, you're saying that it's not so much that the 30 minutes that therefore I will come up with a smart idea on what to do to them. It's the 30 minutes is going to put me on a different plane of relationship with the children. Yes, because it's going to activate the yusoid. It's going to activate the high heart being able to see. So then you're going to be effective in your interactions. It's not so much about your activism. It's about being act effective. To be effective, when the heart needs to be, the yusoid of the heart has to be Awakened. How do you get that awakened? Well, that's attention, mental attention, mental attention, because he, that's what he was just saying now, that the insight from the brain, it has direct connection to the, to, to you say, which is a healthy attachment, effective attachment, successful attachment. You're going to be able to be a supplier to them if you put the mental time to at pay attention. The half an hour a day. So the half an hour a day is not the time that you're interacting with the kids. It's the time of contemplating on this. That attention. Yes. But then when you are, when you do interact, that's when you're going to be successful. Because you activated your natural God-given ability to have emotional intelligence. So since we're on the subject, so what should a person do? He should say after Shachris, uh, after breakfast, he's going to sit down and just for half an hour, he's just going to think about the Chinuch of children. Well, what he should say is um, there's a minute to say the, the, the Psalms of the, uh, the, the Psalm, which is one higher than the age of the child. So let's say a child is 15 years old. So we would say Psalm 16 because they're in their 16th year. And as you're saying the psalm, praying to God that you'd be successful in educating them of each child, you're actually mentally attaching to them. Oh, so you would say that each one of the psalms every day for each, each kid? For each of the child, for each child. And that would take you to 30 minutes or it's a start? Well, it's a start. Okay, what else? Now that so I'm looking for more you things to, to do. You need to, think, you need to think, where are they now? Where should they be? What is a proper intervention to bring them to where should they be? What is the most crucial? You have to decide, like, what is the most uh, crucial thing right now for them? Is it something within my abilities? What is the most, you, uh, like the free Rebbe, it also is a master of Yisoid from the oldest spirits of all the Rebbeim. The previous Rebbe was Yisoid. And it also connects with his great pen, pen abilities. By the way, if you write, you activate your side as well. Because your side is a, a pen is also spiritually um, a device which, which you actually is, um, is even shaped in the idea of a, a, a tool of the same as a pipe of speaking to people. A pen is also a pipe. And it, but it's a small vav. It actually looks like a small vav. So when you decide to put pen to paper, you activate your side, and the paper is malchus. Malchus is the expression. It's like the wall, like we said before. So when you start writing, you activate your, your, your side, and that's what we see by the Friedrich Rebbe. He used to do a lot of um, writing. He said his friend, his friend, he wrote down all the stories that we have now from many generations were all written down by him. He did the interviews and he wrote them down. So when you write, you activate that uh, ability. You can actually, a person can actually heal emotions 
through pen therapy because the person's subconscious ideas leak into their handwriting. And there's people that study this and they can see what's leaking. They can see if a person can keep a secret or that, that won't keep a secret because what a person subconsciously thinking will leak uh, into their the, the way they shape the, the, the words, the letters. So then once a person realizes that a character flaw from one of them, I'll give you just an example. When you write like um, cool or something, does a person close the, the O's or they open? So they fully close the O's when they're writing. So if they keep it, if it opens up, it could be that they don't keep secrets. They speak too much, right? Character flow. So how do you do? You, you, you force yourself to close the O's when you're writing cool. And every time you write the O's or the A's, you force yourself to close them, keeping in mind that you need to keep your mouth, you know, closed. Not always, you, need, you don't need to be speaking about everything. And that will actually change a person's character. So by writing, by, by writing, a person will connect from your side to all the way to the core of the soul because you activate the core of the soul. The same thing, behavior. Uh, behavior um, connects with your side. So by choosing to behave differently than a, than a person's character flaw, it will activate the core of your of, of uh, the core of your side. The way a person is in big faces, the way they are in Adam Kadman, the original man, and they can connect up with their um, original um, template of creation and recreate themselves. So by behavior and by writing, and even why the way the way they write, the way they shape the words, they can. Uh, activate the 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 deepest aspects of the soul, which will promote or provoke a change in them. Well, absolutely, will provoke a change in them because he activated your side. So, what could you do when in regards to education? So, it's thinking and paying attention, saying the the thumbs, but also thinking what is the most um, important thing. In other words, when you when you bombard a person with more than one thing to change, they won't be able to handle it. Only needs to be one at a time. You need to choose the most important thing that this child needs to achieve in their life right now, and only aim for that one thing. That's what the Friedrich Rebbe, the previous Rebbe, writes. So you need to evaluate what are different flaws this individual child has at this point in time, or how can he need does he need help, and then. Well, what intervention can I do? Maybe I just maybe my intervention is say till him. Maybe I it's not in within my power. Or maybe there is something I can do within my power. How is it going to be effective? Well, when you spend time, the freak forever writes, spend time, spend time thinking, then it's then the delivery will be most appropriate. And when the when the when the receiver sees that you spent time thinking about something, they will I have more trust that you got it right, and rightly so. Rightly so, because because you put in the time, then you activated the side, and the emotional intelligence is going to be correct, and the heart is going to be um, aware. So these are practical tools, which is sort of like telling us without telling us in 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 this chapter. Wow. Okay. This is a beautiful chapter. It is is a it's a beautiful chapter to go over and over again, especially anybody who wants to activate their deep emotional intelligence. Parity. So, it also comes up from this that it's the Rebbe Shab's guidance for parenting is in the Pretty quiet. Correct. Hmm? Pretty correct. Pretty Karebis. But he quotes it from his father, from the Rebbe Rishab. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, that the answer is really in getting quiet. It's the, it's the thinking about it, the quiet thinking. You won't need... Today, people are in the mode of get hiring, taking courses on parenting and hiring parenting coaches and all kinds of stuff like that. 
the key is just to return back to the simplicity of just if a person is contemplative about their child, the answers will come. The answers will come, yeah. The heart will be awakened. So you don't right. need, well, it's nice to learn from other people, but really, to, for really effective parenting, a person needs to quieten down and and just attach mentally and the answers will come because because the, their their superpowers of the heart will be activated right and the answer is right the answer is not just the thing the the idea the answer is in the the connection that will become possible through having done that contemplation right and that that can't be substituted by Teach uh, education exactly because he just said comprehension won't help Wow. Comprehension won't help. Educating and parenting classes don't help because because comprehension only goes to height. The most a person can get from the classes is you're right, but you won't be able to do anything with those classes. What's gonna? The only thing useful is at least he's thinking. Right, and if the the parent then tries to implement the suggestions of the class therapist counselor whatever it is it, it, it's not going to work it's not going to connect with the child because it's not coming from that place of you say yeah he has to put them enough time focusing and then if he activated your side then it's going to work but if it's just comprehension ain't going to work so really if we wanted to help ourselves first we got to help ourselves first but i'm saying then to help other people would be you just make a 30 minute of quiet place time <laughs> people would come like you can people go to davin there's a lot of hustle and bustle you have like a quiet space everyone get like a table and maybe a pen and paper and you could just check in for 30 minutes and just sit there yeah pen, pen and paper would be good because that still that's in line with your site wow that'd be incredible if you could start in a in a jewish community a large room with a bunch of small tables pen and paper and the door would say 30 minutes of Chinuch contemplation room. People just could come in, just sit. Yeah, you know what? Where a lot of my solutions get figured out. When I write to the Rebbe, a pun, so I have to put pen to paper and I have to summarize the issues that are going on. But that also summarizes for myself. Right. And that also, um, also clarifies what is priority and what is secondary because I sat down to write it down. So giving a report to the Rebbe on your doing is actually uh, therapeutic on the person themselves because they're activating your site that's now going to have a super emotional intelligence to, to the situation. So the actual, the, uh, the actual act of writing is actually already a, a salvation in its own right. So why would a person, of, since it's so effective, why would a person avoid that either in the contemplation the focus the attention what was the word you used attention and contemplation for their children or for themselves in writing a letter right themselves writing a, a right. well both, both it is all you say this one is being right. so why would what would what would why would a person tr constantly try to avoid that like well you, because if they have to activate a deeper aspect of themselves it's like me and the super me you know, like Chitanias, you said, and Primus, you said, it's it's a very big thing. Like, I'm going to shut everything out, and I'm going to now connect to Primus, you said, and I'm going to be a different myself. It's a big, it's a lot of effort. It's like, it's like, it looks like I'm going to be climbing a wall or something. Uh huh. So then a person gets busy, avoids it, doesn't write the letter, doesn't think about the kids, tries to deal with superficial solutions because he's avoiding that deeper experience yeah, yeah. only the superficial me that's doing all these things but now i'm gonna have to have the the deep me being activated and how do i stop and i like how do i stop the superficial everything's running how do i how am i gonna stop the superficial superficial me in order to make deep me now i'm not gonna get anything done right so that's why people avoid it but the answer is well i you, first of all, it doesn't need to be half an hour. Start with five minutes, and you're going to be more effective.
I think that's what they these guys mean when these uh, CEOs say, "Oh, they do meditation every day." What do you what do you, what are they saying? They well, they they have a lot of workers, right? So they're they they only shine when they're the most effective. So they're thinking about, well, how can I be the most effective? I must meditate. What is meditation? Paying attention. So they have to affect the yesoid. They have to awaken their yesoid. The great salesmen. And they, and they need to be able to uh, connect to their people if they want to be effective. So that's why they do this meditation. It's just an activity of of um, um, of paying attention of your sight. That's what they're doing. They're activating their your sight in order they should be better people because they're paying attention. They want to awaken their awaken their heart. That's what they're doing. Well, they want to activate the heart of their employees. The vision of the heart. Yeah, they have to be able to have be able to see more than others can see in order to activate they have to motivate others i mean if if a ceo is not effective in motivating others he won't be able to survive so he has to have a vision in his heart to what other people need so a ceo really is an educator it's just it's of a company and not of a family So, yes. So this also makes a provider, a person who's a provider. That's what Yosef is, a provider for the food of the entire world. And he did it in an intelligent way. He knew how to deliver the food. He knew how to store it. He knew what to tell the people. He knew when to be strict, when to be kind. He knew the rules. Right? How does one figure that out? Well, he's your side. That's what, that's what he does. So how does this affect it in one's ability to provide in practical terms? Well, the, the, since God is your side, is the deliverer, right? So when a person connects to the your side, they become a vessel where God trusts that this guy will not squander the money and be able to deliver properly. So then God sees the person as a vessel and gives him blessing. Yusoid brings down blessing. Uh-huh. So what's a, give me a, give a practical example. I mean, because we, we, we have a practical example in the child raising. We have a practical example of writing a letter. So what about in, in Pranasa, being a provider? What would a person do? Write down the data. That's what yeah, Yasef. It says Yasef was a an accountant. He measured everything. He was an accountant in in Patifa's house. It says that um, Yasef went stayed home to do his malachte. Um, the Targum Munkulus translates and it says Livdek um, Kisve to check the Chishbinin or something the the books of accounting. His job was to check the accounts to make sure that the resources were given out appropriately to each thing. So if you want to be successful as a deliverer, you got to get data on what's going on, where, how you're spending your money, how is money coming in. And then once you have that information, you attach to that information instead of it being a fog, then you can say, hey, what if I put a little more effort into this and a little less effort into that? Will that make me more effective? What if I can make um, work another 15 minutes tomorrow and I know I'm going to achieve that uh, another number and uh, and by doing this for four days in a row, it's going to give me a different number. And then with that, those resources, I'm going to be able to do one, two, th two and three, which I couldn't do before. That's basically an attachment, a, a intimate attachment to what's going on, to the data. Where is everything going? Where are the resources going? But mainly, how am I creating new resources? That's always always much more important. How is, how is, how am I? Where am I most effective? Right? Data. Where am I most effective? Who are my best customers? 
what if I put more effort into the uh, high ticket customers and drop the low ticket cup? What's going to happen, right? That's, that's an attachment to the data, to the numbers. And then he, he automatically becomes a bigger channel, channel blessing. I'll give you another practical one, immediately separating MISA, right? Immediately separating MISA, getting the accountant to separate in MISA a tenth into another account. And you're paying attention to the numbers. And you're paying attention to the numbers and that brings more blessing. Like the Kawasaki teacher, the, the money teacher, Kawasaki, Japanese guy, he says at the end of his one of his book, uh, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, he says, is there anything you take from my book is the idea of typing. And I heard that also from an accountant. He says, I don't know how, but when people type, things just start to work out. Mm. Okay. And you know, it's a challenge because people think I need to be productive. I need to be productive. But when you're doing the, the numbers, the data, you're not being productive. Well, but it's something that needs to be done to be able to plan for the future to be more you know, to be more successful. I'm gonna give you another example from the, the Rockefeller took over the oil industry through superior accounting. His main thing was that he looked at every number and say, well, how can we get the most out of this dollar, out of this dollar, out of this dollar? And then he would just show the books to, to, to other owners and they said, well, we can't compete. And they would sell to him. And, once he got the ball ro rolling, he was able to, to take over the entire industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, like the Rebbe Marash, the Rebbe brings down it's uh, that it's not our custom too fast nowadays, but um, a, a extra fast. People used to do extra fast, but the Rebbe says the, the, the fast that we um, would do is a fast from speaking, a 15 minute fast from speaking. Mm -hmm. To promote that. Plimius, that would be like a Plimius, he said, yeah. Mm. To think about oneself, that's what, that's, where they are, where they should be. Mm -hmm. Are they fooling themselves? In what areas are they fooling? In what areas are they successful? What should I repeat? Do more? But you know. What if I did this? What would happen? You know, making a, such an account. And of course, connecting all the way back back to the essence of God, person's full potential. Yeah. Wow! Thank you, Rabbi Herrick. Beautiful. I'm sure, people are gonna appreciate this.